This is the Partner for Leads Biz podcast for small business owners, entrepreneurs, and sales professionals. It's a podcast for those of you who want to build your business in a way that is all about relationships first. Welcome to Episode 9. I am your host, Roberto Hernandez. This is another interview episode and features an entrepreneur by the name of Carrie Brandow. Carrie and her husband, George, are the dearest of friends. My wife and I met them around 2000 and 2001 while we were living in the San Jose, California area. We met them because we were looking for hair stylists and good haircuts and Carrie and George as fate would have it were hairstylists are hairstylists and one time salon owners they've been in the beauty profession for decades now much of that time most of that time pursuing their passions for art and music as well There's a new chapter that Carrie and I talk about that uh, she is spearheading. It is with Salonch, a mobile app designed to connect salon professionals with the right salon to work in. We talk about the journey, Carrie's stint with a startup incubator, leaving her career as a hair and color stylist and beauty pro to start Salonch, and of course, the product itself. You can find Carrie and Solange at Solange.com. That's S-A-L-O-N-C-H dot com. And you should look them up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. On Facebook, they are Tribe Solange. And on Instagram and Twitter, they are Solange Tribe. All right, here's my conversation with Carrie Brando. Carrie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Roberto. Thanks for having me. I'm honored. And it's my pleasure. I'm really excited to talk about what you have going on. And before um, we get into your uh, your new little startup, I want to back into your history um, that I thought would be relevant and quite possibly super relevant to people that listen to the podcast. But let's see, you and I, my wife and your husband, George, met, I think, around 2000, 2001. And yes. you and George had a salon that you owned at the time in uh, Los Gatos, California. Can you talk about, I guess, the brief trajectory of how you got, you and George got to opening a salon and, and what that looked, what it looked like when it was at its peak in terms of um, the number of people that you were dealing with? Sure. So, um, I'll, I'll go back even further. So, um, George and I met in beauty school and um, it was chemistry at first sight. <laughs> and um, anyhow, so we both have been in the beauty industry as, as cosmetologists um, for over 30 years now. And um, throughout that time, you know, we had different places we worked um, as employees, as independent contractors. And, and you know, we had the bug to uh, start our own business and and, you know, have that opportunity to create the environment we wanted and have the structure we wanted and the team we wanted. So we, um, we found a great little location in, um, in Las Gatas, California, and opened up um, Brandau Brandau Salon and Day Spa. And um, it was actually an existing salon when we bought it. And it was by a different name and a different structure, but... Um, it was a salon, and we had a team of people that we adopted, and so we went through an interesting transition with that, and at one point, we realized that uh, where we wanted to take the business and our business model and vision wasn't aligned with the people that had been there for numerous years before we were there, so we... Um, you know, told them that our vision and, you know, we knew that it obviously wasn't something that was going to, you know, work for them. So we said, take your time, find the right place. Um, that's going to work for you guys. So, so we, um, after running the salon for over two years, we found ourselves in an empty (laughs) salon and day spa and we, um, we had that opportunity to create what we really wanted and to totally change the structure. So it was, um, brave and scary. And, um, but you know, we were really happy. Can you talk about the scary part a little bit more? Um, when, when the salon was empty, as you said, after about two years, because of the changes that you were making, I I would imagine that that was partly a, good thing in your eyes at the time, but 
uh, understandably scary. Can you just kind of talk about how that felt? Yes. So uh, brick and mortar is very expensive. Um, Running a business and the overhead and to, you know, have an established business with a team that, you know, is bringing in the money to pay the overhead and you're profitable and miserable and you, um, it's not your dream. And so you, you know that to achieve your dream, you, um, you have to start all over and, you know, deal with the overhead and, and then attract the right people. And, and, you know, that wasn't as easy as we thought, you know, we had our, our, you know, our ideal team in our head and what we wanted. And we went to the beauty schools and we gave classes and we recruited and all that takes time. And, training people and getting them up to speed and, um, some work out, some don't work out. Um, but in the end it was really what made us happy. And we had a team of people that were, you know, all on the same page and, and, you know, believed in, in the mission and, and, and the structure of the salon and how we treated our customers and how we performed services and so that was a beautiful thing. So it was all worth it in the end, but very scary in the beginning. Yeah. And so then another chapter eventually comes. Um, the business, at least, you know, from my eyes as a friend and, and client, um, ran its course, I guess is a good way to put it. Can you talk about that a little bit and how that chapter ended and a new one began? Yes. So after we um, had the salon for seven years, we decided it was, it was a hard decision to come to and, and George was ready before I was, but we decided that, you know, the business was always going to be super management intensive. And um, I originally thought that we would have, you know, we would build people within our um, company to, become managers and take on more responsibility. And then we kind of realized "Ah, that's not going to happen. Not with our, you know, smaller business. And, um, so, you know, it was kind of a 24 seven and we decided that we wanted to sell the salon. That way we could pursue, we could still do hair and do what we love and pursue other passions after, you know, being in the industry as long as we had been, we both had really established clientels. And once you're that established, you there's more opportunity to, um, you know, really customize your schedule and, and make it so it really works for your lifestyle. And so George is a drummer, a musician, and uh, he was able to pursue those passions while still you know, working in the career he loves. And I'm a painter and a sculptor. So I got to pursue that also. So, so it was a nice balance. And we had many years of that. And we were really, really happy doing that. And we were um, working at another salon, renting our chairs. So we were independent contractors in, a, in another person's establishment. And, and that worked beautifully for us. So you know, we were um, in a position, George is still working there, still doing hair full time, and um, being in a position where we had that lovely balance and, you know, a wonderful career and then our other passions that we could pursue. Um, so it was, yeah, great. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, man, and I want to underscore that the pursuit of your passions was very visible as, as friends of yours, um, and watching friend, you know, your other friends watching you, um, you, you know, you could see people, almost a lot of people almost in envy, right? It was like, wow, you guys, you get to spend this time, um, doing music or doing arts, you know, your passions and seemingly to those on the outside, you work two days a week. <laughs> 
laughed, but I know that wasn't exa- <laughs> yeah, that wasn't exactly accurate. But those are three hard days, right, in the salon industry, and you know, I'm doing what you do, but you, the two of you, have other um, financial things going on to put a, just kind of a, a blanket on it, uh, a blanket term on it. But you had some other financial things going on to to help you out, which was really cool, and it was amazing to watch you two do that. So before we move on to the the latest chapter, um, I want to ask if you can share what the biggest challenge was back in the, with the Brando Brando salon of creating managers that you originally thought you would be able to do, but decided that you would go another direction. Ultimately, what, what was the, the biggest challenge in retrospect and, and, and biggest learnings in retrospect? Well, I don't think management is ever easy. And um, I'm still, you know, learning about management. And it's as long as you're in business in any kind of leadership position, it's something you have to constantly work on. And it is really difficult. And I, I just always look internally and say, how could I have handled things better? How could I be a better leader? How could I... Uh, be better at interviewing people, at hiring people. Um, how can I, you know, be better at um, motivating and inspiring and um, getting people to, you know, to want to be a part of the dream? So, you know, it's that's always the hardest thing. And then, you know, not everybody wants to take on extra responsibility. So it's just finding those people, hiring those people, finding those people. And we did, we did, we hired a, a, an amazing woman that um, actually was our mentor um, when we were starting our career. And, and she really helped us with our business. And she, you know, so she came to work for us because she really believed in what we were doing and, and you wanted to be a part of it. So she came to work for us, and and she did take on a lot. She um, took on the training that I had been doing with the newer stylists. Um, we created a skill certification program, and and she she stepped into that role and and drove that, and so that was wonderful. Um, so yeah, it's it's a challenge. Yeah. Okay, so you make another change somewhat recently, and I, before I lose the thought or the, the little note I took, uh, on a scary scale, does it compare to the moment that the, I guess if there's a demarcation in time where you emptied out the salon and you made this big change, <laughs> do they compare? Um. <sighs> Well, mm, I don't know. They, you know, I, I like scary. <laughs> I'm kind of strange that way. I like scary because I don't know. Scary is, um, you know, is a motivator. Scary is, but you know, the scary I don't like is, um, the scary of thinking of, you know, someday looking back and going, I never tried. I never pursued. I never, followed my dreams. I never, you know, what if, what if? And so that's the scary I avoid at all cost. And so I kind of embrace the other scary and, um, this new venture. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty scary. (laughs) I, that's really, um, that's, that's really great. The scary part that you avoid specifically, um, you know, the reflection of, or the thought of looking back and having to admit that you didn't, you didn't give it a shot or you didn't try it. That's um, really nice. As we were talking earlier, and I don't know if it was when you s- used the word scary when, when we were talking about the salon or something else you said, but I made a little note to myself about um, a book that I recently picked up called Principles by a, a guy named Ray Dalio, who's been referred to as the Steve Jobs of investing. But uh, he has a passage in there talking about um, fear and uh, maybe most commonly it's talked about as comfort zone versus getting out of your comfort zone, but talking about it as, as in terms of such a critical path for one's own development that um, uh, and he also uses the word 
uh, pain in there that we spend most of our time avoiding pain when in reality it's one of the things that if we are willing to face it and fall and get back up, that these are the things that help us uh, grow as um, as individuals and business leaders or whatever we want to be. And that doing so repeatedly with practice, like with anything, um, makes us better and better at the um, improving and sort of... Uh, he even mentions, uh, you know, getting familiar with that feeling of, of pain or fear. And it, it's more of a, he doesn't say familiar friend, but maybe it's more of a familiar friend or more of a, I think he says, oh, that again. But you know where it ends up because of the way you uh, see it through. And I suspect that you and George uh, have knowingly or not have been doing this with your own lives. Absolutely. So um, let's talk about your, your newest venture. And I definitely heard something you said earlier that um, ties into the idea, but um, why don't you talk about how it how it came about? What 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 sparked what what the moment was that sparked you to 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 do it and, and yeah, start working on it? Well, I remember that moment like it was yesterday, and it was actually an idea George had out of frustration, and he he I remember where I was sitting and when he talk to me about it and where he was. And anyhow, he, um, he said, you know, Carrie, I had this idea and, you know, there should be a, an app where people could go and learn everything they need to learn about the salons in their community to find the right place to work. And there's nothing like that out there. So it's really a big challenge for people that are, are looking to make a change or looking for their next opportunity or people in beauty school trying to figure out, you know, where, where they should work based on what's the right fit for them. So he's, he says, you know, just a general in general, he said, there should be this, this should exist. And I think my heart stopped beating and I said, are you serious about this, George? Because um, if you're serious about pursuing this, I think we should do this. And I, I knew at that moment our lives had changed. Was there a, a pivotal moment for George that made him share that idea? Or was it sort of the lifelong... I, I'm sure there was some reflection in there too based on your professional experiences. But was there a specific moment in time that made him blurt the idea out? <laughs> he was actually really frustrated with the place he works and, and grabbed his phone because that's what we do today. Everybody, you know, especially people half our age, they, they want something, they need something, they want to find something, they need to solve a problem, whatever, they grab their phone. They grab their phone and they look for the answer in their phone. They look for the app. They look for, they Google something. They look for the answer with their phone. So he naturally grabbed his phone and, and it's like, ah, there's no way I can, you know, find this information. It's not out there. It's not on a platform. What if there, what do you think would have happened if he did find a platform? Well, and that was our first um, task was to, you know, dig in and research and research and research. And quite honestly, if we had found that solution, if that solution already existed and it was um, in, a, in a way that made sense and didn't need improvement on, we wouldn't have pursued our business. But there is nothing like it. Our competition is, is approaching the, the pain point completely differently. So we, the beauty is that we are our own customers. We are our clients, our customers. We have experienced the pain point and we know it intimately. We know our customers intimately and there are people, we are them. So we know exactly what our product needs to fulfill um, in a comprehensive way, their needs and and solve their pain point. Yeah, I ask the question. Well, there, there's one thing very um, interesting about 
your your last answer there, and that is that you've experienced the pain point. So there's that sort of you're scratching your own itch syndrome in there, which often makes for some great products. And um, the other interesting thing is, uh, you know, nobody else had done it. And, and I was curious, you know, what if somebody had, but what if somebody wasn't doing it quite good enough, but almost good enough? Would you have, could you have? But um, yeah, I don't guess you really would know. You say you wouldn't, but you never know. <laughs> um, yes. It's interesting nonetheless. I, I And I bring the, the latter one up because um, I've heard so many times myself is uh, it's kind of like, so what if somebody else is doing it? <laughs> but it depends, I think, um, on what we're talking about and um, and the degree of perfection with which somebody else might be doing it. And uh, whether you see yourself as the right person to do it better somehow or draw a bigger audience toward what you're doing. And then how about, so now you've started on it. I'm, I'm, I, if I can rewind, uh, how long has it been since you said, all right, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to give it everything I've got and I'm going to retire from the, the chair, so to speak, from from doing hair and color and the other things that you did and devote all of my time to this. How long has that been? It has been, well, um, so a little over two years, but oh. it's been one year since I I said goodbye to my amazing, wonderful clientele and amazing career behind the chair um, to devote my full attention to Solange. Okay, wow, and time flies. I, I always say, um, however long you think it's been, double it, and that's how long it probably really was. But <clears throat> so during that time, if I guess if I rewind about maybe eighteen months to a year, can you talk about you know how your maybe how your approach, the difference between how your um, how you walked into it in terms of getting getting the idea started and and pursuing the dream, and then. And I'm asking the question because I I have observed again, you know, from a now from afar because I don't live in your neighborhood anymore. But still, we, you know, we see each other thanks to the wonders of social media and and, uh, <laughs> and texting and all that. But uh, it looks like some big big changes happened during the the two year period, specifically maybe eighteen months to to twelve months ago. Can you talk a little bit about the develop those developments and and what they have meant for where you're at today? Well. I have learned, I mean, this whole thing has been a learning curve, and um, I have learned that things take longer than you think they're going to take, and they're more complicated than you think, and, you know, you really can't control that. All you can do is, you know, get up and work really hard towards your intentions and your goals, and the, the development and the technology took longer than I could have ever imagined. And it's, it's ongoing. I mean, we're always developing and always, um, you know, innovating, but, um, that's been the big thing. So the last, um, over those two years, you know, the first six months was planning and, and, and creating our, our, wireframes for, you know, how we wanted our product to function and then researching, um, developers and, you know, getting that whole process going. And then, you know, for over, well, close to a year and a half, we've been working with this developer and, um, you know, that's been a lot of work and, um, we're super happy with our product. You know, that was one of the things, you know, that I knew exactly how I wanted it to function. And so, and how I wanted it to look. And um, so just, you know, working out all those details and and then beta testing, that was a whole nother thing. And that's when it really got fun because I got to work with the people I love, the salon owners, and get their input. And, um, you know, they they received it really well. And there's been a lot of excitement around it. So that's been awesome. And then, um, and then just working on, you know, uh, an organic traction and now we're working with a marketing firm. So now we're, you know, going nationwide 
And um, so each stage is a whole nother set of challenges and, and a whole nother set of scary <laughs> and a whole nother set of excitement. So that's where we're at right now. Well, let me ask you sort of a nerd or geek question. Uh, what, what did you use for developing your wireframes? Oh, you don't want to know what we used, <laughs> what George and I used, because we are not from that world. So we we don't have the great software, and so we use good old Word, and um, you know. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Uh, hey, yeah, you know. a friend of ours made some comment about how it's amazing what you guys you know get on a tricycle and you can you know <laughs> you know run a race against cars you know. So, um, yeah, so, but that didn't matter. We put together our, our vision and then we were able to take that to the developers, give that to them. And, um, you know, it's a good way to really get the communication started. And then they created wireframes and, you know, we kind of went back and forth and worked out details I think that's really cool. Um, it, it wasn't what I was expecting you to say, and when you when you uh, mentioned the wireframes, I thought, oh, cool, you're going to learn about some neat tool that they were using. But it's it's I think great for people to hear that you don't need neat tools if you have the idea and the intention and and uh, the willingness to face uh, face the scary, as you say. Um, I don't know how much time has passed. I want to say twelve months, but. Um, just from memory, approximately 12 months ago, you kind of joined a startup boot camp or something of that nature. Are you still involved in it? And can you talk a wee bit about that? Um, yes, it was a, um, oh, an incubator. Mm-hmm. And um, the particular one that I joined um, did not align with my values. So I, um, I, I made some amazing friends in the program. So I, I don't regret joining and I, um, you know, had some great experiences and some wonderful challenges, but I, I, I left after a few weeks because the, um, I just didn't feel like our values were aligned. I did not know that part. Can you talk a little bit about the value misalignment? Um, the number one thing that was really kind of shocking to me is this this organization really um, talks a lot about you know finding those entrepreneurs that are that are truly of that mindset and and that have those characteristics and then you know they talk about how their program will nurture them and um, and entrepreneurs are outside the box. You know, we often tend to not be good employees because we have often. our own <laughs> ideas of how to to do things, and we want to we want to create and we want to do things beat to our own drums. And um, so, once I joined, I realized that it was kind of shocking to me that that how they ran their program was more military and really trying to squeeze us into little boxes. And, um, and it was the, the military tactics and the, it just, it just didn't work. And I felt like I can't waste time. I, my time is trying to get a business going. I, I can't waste time, you know, um, marching with, you know, um, things that aren't going to march my company forward. And um, I don't recall the name of the the incubator, but I know it's a uh, popular one. Would you refresh my mem- memory? Oh, I'm not comfortable saying anything bad. <laughs> well, you didn't. About, like, you didn't, and guess what? It's going to be in my show notes regardless <laughs> unless you forbid me to do it. But um, <laughs> you didn't say anything bad, but it's okay. We, we can move on from that. Um, okay, so the, the, the app is launched, and... You know, I remember when you showed me the app, you were not nearly to a point where you were happy with it. I was like, hey, this looks, you know, this is promising. And I, I haven't looked, I haven't downloaded it, <laughs> the new one. But um, I know it's probably really good because I know that the standard you were holding yourself to for it. Um, how are you feeling about about the current version of it? And 
what can you see in terms of the the evolution right now? I know you you know, may not be able to see everything yet because um, everything's a new challenge, as you said. But uh, how are you feeling about it now, and and what do you see looking forward? Well, it's um, you know, and the feedback I've gotten from from beauty professionals and salon owners is that it's intuitive. Um, it's really um, clean and, and attractive and intuitive and and easy to use. And um, it's, um, what was I going to say? I just lost it. It's, um, it really solves the problem. It, it, it really addresses the problem that it was designed to solve. And, and it does it in a comprehensive way now. There are all of these other aspects that I want to add to it that are um, additional to solving the the problem. But the most important thing is that it is it's pretty solid, and that it really addresses the problem and really solves the problem in a easy to use, fun way. And um, so I feel really good about that. And then, of course, I have all these other stuff I want to add to it and other features that, you know, people can enjoy and features that will bring the user back to the app even on a daily basis so that it's not something that you just use once and then you don't feel like you need it once you find the right place to work. So I have, um, so the development never ends. That's smart. And I'm kind of laughing inside. It suddenly jumped into my head that, yeah, with salon people, I'm being very stereotypical, but yeah, with salon people, it's great because they can just keep looking forward with the app to the next place that they want to go to as soon as they get burned out on the one that they're at. But <laughs> Well, and the idea is that they don't get burned out, that yeah. they truly find their their match. Yes. But, but the app is, you know, I think... I'm a very curious person, and as you know, George is a very curious person, and you know, I think that that is a common thing for beauty professionals. We're artistic, we're curious, we're visual. Um, so, you know, I want the app to also be entertaining because it's not always about you know I, I need to find a new place to work. If the idea is that you you've found that place because you've used the app and you're happy and you don't. You know, we're not trying to encourage people to make changes just for the sake of making changes. But I know that it's fun to look around and go, hmm, okay, I'm in, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area, but, you know, what are they doing in New York with barbershops? You know, what are the new hip barbershops in New York? And just look and see pictures and read about them and, and see what you know, what they're doing with their interior design and, hey, what's going on with blow-dry bars in L.A.? And, you know, what are they doing in Seattle with, um, you know, the the hip hipster salons? So it's kind of a fun thing. And see where your friends work. You know, you find out that your friend, you know, is working at the new salon around the corner and you, you can pull it up on the app and, you know, see what it looks like. So... Yeah. Kind of just also entertainment. I can see the potential. I would love to ask or love to talk about the uh, the video that you put together. The I guess the primary one. Maybe you've done multiple ones for the website and the resourcefulness uh, with which you and George, I presume, um, orchestrated it. I see some familiar faces, some familiar places. Uh, but one question that's not really relevant to that is who is the heroine of the of the um, of the video that's on the website, Nicole Gray, lovely, lovely, amazing young woman, a terrific hairdresser, and just a beautiful person. And that's kind of a fun story. So, um, so we hired uh, Market Me um, Video. Actually, it's called Market Me TV Productions. And and the reason we hired them to uh, produce the video is because we, in our research, looking at lots of different companies and looking at their work, um, one of the things about Market Me's videos, they all told a story. And I thought, the, these people know how to tell a story. They know how to have a story unfold, 
So we, we started working with them on it. And, um, you know, it, since it's our vision, we, you know, we wrote, you know, the voiceover and, um, you know, kind of had the concept and then they ran with it and did a brilliant job. But they wanted us to hire actors and they wanted us to start looking at some of the websites that you can, you know, scroll through and see the different talent, different actors. And it was like, why would we do that when we have our people and our people are awesome. Hairdressers are awesome. They're cool. They're hip. They're, they're beautiful, you know, and they're, and, and I like the fact that, that we are people, you know, are all have their own style. You know, we don't fit in a box. So some hairdressers are edgy and some hairdressers are more conservative. So I like that variety. And so we just asked our people, we just gathered hairdressers and barbers and we were short because, you know, it's kind of like we got the date, we got the location. Okay. We need this many people. Um, and we were short. So then the next best thing are musicians because musicians are awesome and they're cool. And, and so we started asking, um, you know, George is so connected in that world and cause that's also his people. So, um, those were the people you really recognized, uh, were the musicians. So we got some musicians. So, and they, they were our extras. They were our clients in the shoot and, um, they were fabulous. And one of them got a spot. Did I, am I remembering right? One of them got a spot as a, um, stylist, right? The musicians. Yes. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Aki Kumar. He's like, you know, he's just so cool. He's so <laughs> and he, it's not that he tries to be cool. He was just born cool. So he was like, you know, the perfect person to play a hairdresser. And, um, and then back to Nicole Gray, she, um, so because we were short a few heads, a few, um, hairdressers, George, said, you know, I've been following this gal on Instagram and she just has good energy and she's really cute and her posts are really fun and positive and I just have a good feeling about her. What do you think if I sent her a message and and asked her if she wanted to be in the video? And I said, absolutely, that'd be great. So he did that and she said yes. And um, meanwhile, we're trying to figure out, okay, who's going to play the lead role and we know some of our people are shy and, you know, so we're talking about that and, and we're like, well, you know, Nicole is awfully cute. Now I haven't even met her yet. I've just seen her on Instagram. I'm kidding. <laughs> and George hasn't even met her. At this point. And, you- and, yeah, but we both kind of were like, well, we'll ask her when she shows up. And sure enough, she was just this, you know, this beaming light. And she showed up that morning for the for the video shoot and we asked her and she said sure I'll do it. And <laughs> Had she, she done anything amazing. like this before? Nope. <laughs> and she was amazing. So um you know sometimes you just go with your instincts, you go with your gut and you just I mean you wing it. She is a natural I, as I was watching I was like oh cool they found someone who'd done you know something like this or I mean had she done I, mean, I guess she's in a sense whether she did it um as what we would truly call a model, but in some sense being in her industry or in your industry that uh, she does have a little bit of experience there, but um, yeah, she's a total natural. Yep. Everybody, everybody in the, in the video though is great. And I love how you um, went with your people, as you say, and the location, is that the same one that you and George uh, did work in and that George still does work in today? Yes. That's and then the other location is um, Bedlam Beauty and Barber, mm-hmm. and that is downtown San Jose, and that is an amazing barber shop slash hair salon. And um, the owner is um, PJ. He is um, he's been in the business forever, and um, he created that salon barber shop and did an amazing job. It has a great energy. He has a great team, and he um, the interior design is unbelievable. It's yeah, got the old that. world, uh, 
you know, classy old world barbershop. It feels like something that should be, you know, in Manhattan, you know, New York or um, San Francisco. It's just really, it's a nice place. It looks amazing. Um, I, I would even add that the video takes a little twist when you um, move the shots to his space because it's uh, so visually striking. But um, yeah, the whole thing looks great. That's very cool. So now um, I imagined, and tell me if this is true, um, there was some celebration in your circle that I got to watch and you know participate a little bit in and cheering you on with the official launch of Salonch, the, the app and the website. And I thought to myself and commented to George that, uh, yeah, now the real work begins. But, And I, I imagine that um, simply from the, the experience that sticks out in my mind the most is publish, self-publishing a book, that there's all this work that goes into, you know, trying to get your idea on, on paper and then go through the work of um, doing the publishing part and then you push the button and, okay, it's there. And then suddenly you realize, oh, yeah, I guess I need to tell people about it <laughs> and market it and all that. And so the the joke kind of is when you with the book, um, when you're done writing the book, the real work begins. And the writing is, of course, such a uh, can be very daunting, um, especially for first time authors. And I've even heard the most experienced of authors say that you know that that period is brutal. How does it feel for you going from the point of seeing it come to life and what you? what you're experiencing now and seeing ahead? Well, um, yeah, what you said, um, it, it was kind of an interesting experience because it was like, Oh, I guess we need to tell everybody and we needed to start, you know, posting, you know, the video and posting our story and, and, and let, you know, our community know what we're doing and then on a bigger scale, we're working with an amazing um, marketing firm that is is going to, you know, really get the word out for us. But um, when we had that realization, oh, it's time. It's time to start telling people and, and make it public. It was kind of interesting because, you know, people were so fabulous and wonderful and supportive and with the congratulations and, you know, sharing our posts and 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 helping us spread the word and and their kind encouraging words that they gave us but it was a little odd because it was like well all this congratulations like well but really nothing's changed <laughs> since yesterday i mean you know it's like i don't feel any different you know because i've been so in it yeah and in the trenches and you know <laughs> so the whole you know today's the launch day is kind of a Oh, an, an, an odd feeling. Well, I hope that you were able to find a moment to celebrate. Nonetheless, it was a big deal. And um, the fact that you have hired, you and George have hired people when you, when you need them and hired good people. And, and that's kind of been your, uh, what is the, what's the term modus operandum or what <laughs> your mode hmm. of, op, your mode of operation since I've, I've known you. And I wonder uh, if there's a bit of a cautionary tale or, uh, yeah, for other entrepreneurs here. And I know you'll have some insight, but maybe the, uh, that's going to, you know, uh, your field of vision for this is going to get bigger and bigger over time. But there's another kind of, uh, analogous thing about book publishing that I've heard that, um, so self-publishing is a big deal today. And then there's, of course, using the um, traditional. Are you there? Yeah. You hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. It was um, a major power surge and yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> that should happen to me. I'm in the closer to, it's not really a third world country, but I'm in the closer <laughs> out <laughs> to the tropics. <laughs> oh, we have constant power issues here. Ah, technology. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have some editing. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. You know what's so funny? Um, for for all the you know power issues we have here, and and uh, my internet is just as good as it ever was in downtown San Jose, which just speaks to the fact that Silicon Valley, for all of its wonders, is infrastructurally not really on top of the world. No, I was just saying that 
with book publishing, there's the um, the root of traditional publishing, which has um, a lot uh, different appeal um, for different reasons, and and um, some people, I imagine, who are going to write their first book might say, "I no way I'm going to self publish it. It um, it doesn't you know it doesn't look as good or whatever whatever the case may be, or you know maybe they just always dreamed of it." But what I heard that was so interesting, and I just wonder if it is if you see it as true in your case, in your business with the, uh, the product launch and the marketing and the marketing team is that whether you publish self publish or, or go the route of a traditional publisher, um, your book doesn't sell if you're not marketing, if you, the author are not marketing, which, which, um, I was like, ah, oh, oh, wow. You know, you would think, you know, I'm naive. And I thought, oh, you would think with a traditional publisher that they just sort of take care of all that stuff for you. So, so here you are. You launched. Um, you uh, launched your your idea, your product, and uh, it makes total sense to get a team, a marketing team behind it because there's just only so much you can do yourself. As I'm learning, but <laughs> but uh, do you um, see a, a parallel in what I just said about you know all the things that you still have to be doing on the marketing front as the the entrepreneur founder, you and George, um, d- in spite of your team? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, we hired pros and they are really, um, they specialize in the beauty industry. So they're perfectly aligned and they're, you know, an amazing company. So, you know, that really, um, you know, means that we, we better be ready for success because they're going to, you know, work their magic and get the word out. But that doesn't mean that we get to rest on our laurels and, um, you know, the marketing, you know, we still have to be a part of it and, and, you know, constantly, um, communicating and, 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 um, having a relationship with, you know, the beauty industry and getting our voice out there and telling our story. And so it's a huge team effort. Yeah, I would imagine. And I, I guess to, to close on this because I'm so into the, um, personal brand uh marketing i love that you you have your faces on there uh you and george uh on the product um in the video and i presume that you uh, may continue to do that so that not only uh, will the product be something that people love but that you'll also attract people to who you and george are is that is that accurate or true correct because um you know, it's important that, that that message is out there, that, you know, who we are, because, you know, we're, we're not just, um, you know, somebody that's, that's starting businesses in industries they don't know anything about, just trying to find that pot of gold. And, um, you know, there, there's a lot of uh, people out there that they look and, and they're always looking for, uh, you know, a way to enter a market by, oh, you guys need staffing. Okay, I'll design a website where you can post a job. And there's a lot of that out there. And it's in every industry. People um, trying to, to, to tap in to um, a need and and it's a big difference than understanding the pain point and caring about the people and truly wanting to make a difference for an industry you love. Yeah. Well, I love that you're doing that. Uh, I think it's a little more of you and George being for real outside the box. <laughs> Not like that silly old incubator outside the box, <laughs> but uh, yes. that you are um, keeping your faces really on on the product and the idea and um, so cool. I think we could talk for another hour or two, but I, I want to be respectful of your time. And uh, as I mentioned at the top of our conversation, I got people coming to see me. So I got things to do besides get another cup of coffee in me. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. So it's I know Saturday. that, yeah, I know that um, people can find Solange at the new website, Solange.com. And that's, um, like salon with the ch at the end s a l o n c h dot com and on Instagram um, everywhere actually all your social stuffs right there on the website but Salon's Tribe on Instagram which is probably worth mentioning because of the space that you're in 
um, that looks like a great place to reach out to you if people have questions. Is that is that good? Is that true? Yes, okay. absolutely. Cool. Well, absolutely. Carrie, thank you. I'm so uh, I'm so honored that you spent time with me. I know we're friends, and you 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 strike me as the kind of person that would do pretty much anything for me. But I still really appreciate that you took time out um, to uh, to be on the podcast with me. And I I do honestly think this would be a great. Um, I think that a lot of business podcasts, if you are so inclined, would have interest um, in what you're doing. And, um, you know, my little podcast is brand new, this one. Um, but uh, I hope that we can get you noticed on that front if you weren't already thinking about it. And uh, you'll do some other great interviews. That would be fantastic. <laughs> yes. So right. I really appreciate you thinking about me and, and thinking um you know, and, and, and reaching out to me and inviting me to be on your, on your podcast. This is an honor. Of course. You and George are superstars. Give George our love and uh, you and I will talk soon. All righty. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. Thanks again for listening. If you like what you heard today, subscribe on Apple podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Would you like to get an occasional email from me with tips and hacks that I'm learning from guests of this podcast? This is all stuff that you can use to grow your business. You'll get an email about once a week. You can unsubscribe at any time, and I will never send you anything spammy. Just go to partnerforleads.blog, and you can sign up right there. And that's partner singular, the number four, L-E-A-D-S dot blog. Thinking about starting your own referral group? Wondering how you'll manage your online presence, memberships, fees, reporting metrics? Are you struggling to get in front of the right clients? Struggling to spread the word about your new business? Starting a referral leads group is a great way to expand your prospect list, and you could even meet your next client within a few short days. What have you got to lose? Visit partnerforleads.blog forward slash startup to sign up for a free, no obligation, 15-minute consult. Until next time.